ॉट दो वी हैव हर्ड मेनी टेल्स फ्रॉम यू रिगार्डिंग द मैं बेनेडिक्शन बट टूडे वी वॉन्ट टू लिसन टू समथिंग स्पेशल बिकॉज इन दिस प्रेजेंट इयर ऑफ काली वेन ऑल द कास्ट हैव फॉटन अबाउट देर रेस्पेक्टिव ड्यूटीज वी वॉन्ट टू नो इज देर एनी वे टू प्रिवेंट द डिटीरिएशन इन द ह्यूमन वैल्यूज सूता रिप्लाइड ओ ग्रेट मैन your inquiry has great relevance in this era of kali i will certainly tell you about the way by the help of, of which a man can achieve benediction shiv mahapurana contains the essence of vedantic philosophy which gives worldly pleasures as well as salvation mere remembrance of it destroys all the sins of a man one who studies the rudra samhita attentively his gravest of sins are destroyed intensely one who studies rudra samhita silently sitting in front of bhairava idol all of his aspirations are fulfilled a man gets liberated from the sin of killing a brahman if he studies rudra samhita while circumvulating around a banyan tree kailash samhita is even superior than rudra samhita as it elaborates upon the meaning of omkara shiva mahapurana is created by lord shiva himself it contains 12 samhitas which are vidveshwara rudra vinayaka uma maitri ekadasha rudra kailasha shat rudra koti rudra sahasra koti vaivaivya and dharma initially it contained 1 lakh shlokas but it was precised to 24000 shlokas by sage vyasa the present shiva purana in the fourth one which consists of seven samhitas the earlier three shiva puranas are unavailable the scientific analysis of the vedantic mysteries are the main subjects of this divine shiva purana the study of shiva purana helps a man to attain dharma artha kama and moksha suta continues with his narration During the initial period of Shweta Varaha Kalpa, six prominent sages collected near Triveni and started debating as to who was the greatest deity among Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. Their debate remained inconclusive, so they went to Lord Brahma to seek the answer. Lord Brahma told them, "O oh, reverend sages, the sources of Vishnu, Rudra, all the deities, including myself." and all the other creations is none other than mahadeva union with the shiva should be the objective of a man to attain that objective listening to the qualities of lord shiva singing devotional songs in his praise and contemplating on him are the greatest means which help to unite with shiva purification of the mind by the help of doing worship and chanting the name of god is called contemplation singing devotional songs in the form of so stotra or hymns of the vedas or even one's own language is called kirtana the three activities are the supreme means to attain liberation greatness of shivalinga pillar of the fire omkara According to Sutta if a person is incapable of following the three activities that is shravanam kirtanam and mananam then he should worship the shiva linga even by doing this he can attain liberation from all the bondages of the world describing about the majesty of shiva linga Sutta says 
Lord Shiva is the manifestation of Almighty God himself and for this very reason he is known as Nikshkal. Because of his divine beauty, Shiva is called Shaguna. The term Shaguna is also expressed in another way, that is Sakal. Shivalinga is worshipped since it symbolizes the form of Shiva. Lord Shiva is also considered to be Nirguna. In the first Kalpa of Svetavaraha, a battle was fought between Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu to prove their superiority. Lord Shiva manifested before arrogance. After that, he also showed them his form in the shape of Shivalinga. From that day onwards, the Shivalinga became famous. Nandikeshwari ji narrates the tale of battle between Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu. Once while traveling, Lord Brahma reached the abode of Lord Vishnu. He saw Lord Vishnu. He saw Lord Vishnu resting on Sheshnag and being attended by Garuda and other attendants. When Brahma saw that Vishnu did not get up to receive him, he became very angry. Very soon verbal and erupted between them. And the verbal duel, it became so severe that a battle was fought between them, which continued for a very long time. All the deities arrived from the heaven to watch the battle. They became very worried when they saw no sign of battle coming to an end. They decided to go to Lord Shiva to seek his help. Though Lord Shiva knew everything but still feeling ignorance, he asked about the well-beings of the world. The deities told him about the battle fought between Brahma and Vishnu. Lord Shiva then sent his one hundred ganas to pacify both of them. He too went there accompanied by Mother Parvati, boarded on a chariot. When Lord Shiva reached there, he saw that Brahma and Vishnu were about to use their deadly weapons, Maheshwara and Pashupati respectively. Fearing the destruction which these deadly weapons might have caused, Lord Shiva manifested himself in the form of Analasthamba, pillar of fire, between them. Brahma and Vishnu had already released their weapons, Maheshwara and Pashupati. Both the weapons fell into that pillar of fire and got destroyed. Brahma and Vishnu were very surprised to see the pillar of fire, which was so enormous in size that it reached the sky and penetrated down the earth. Vishnu transformed himself into a boar and went to the Patala, neither world, to find the base of that pillar of fire. But he was unsuccessful in his attempt and came back. Similarly, Brahma transformed himself into a swan and flew up in the sky to find its limit. While going through the aerial route, he met a withered Ketki flower which had still some freshness and progress left in it. Lord Shiva smiled at the futile attempts of Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu. As a result of this smile, the Ketaki flower fell down from the branch. Ketaki flower told Brahma that he had been present there since the beginning of the creation but was unable to know about the origin of that pillar of fire. The flower also advised Brahma against making any effort in that direction, as it would be of no use. Brahma then sought the help of Ketaki flower to give a false witness before Lord Vishnu that he, Brahma, had been successful in seeing the limit of that pillar of fire. Ketaki flower agreed. Both of them went to Vishnu and Brahma told him that he had seen the limit of that pillar of fire. Ketaki flower gave a witness. Vishnu accepted the superiority of Brahma. Lord Shiva became very angry with Brahma. He proceeded to punish Brahma for his falsehood. Lord Vishnu requested Lord Shiva to spare the life of Brahma. Lord Shiva became pleased with Vishnu and accorded him the same status as that of his own. Nandikesh, Nandishwara continued with the tale, 
After according same status to Vishnu as of that of his own, Lord Shiva opened his third eye from a, it manifested Bhairava. He ordered Bhairava to kill Brahma. Bhairava served the fifth head of the Lord Brahma. He cut off with his sword. Brahma became very terrified. He was trembling in fear. Lord Vishnu felt pity on his condition and requested Lord Shiva to forgive him. Lord Shiva then stopped Bhairava but told Brahma, You spoke untruth with the desire to become worshipable. It is my curse that you will not be worshipped by anybody. You will possess this only four heads. Brahma begged his forgiveness. Lord Shiva, feeling pity, and Brahma gave him a boon of being the presiding deity of all the yajna. Similarly, the Ketiki flower also prohibited from being used during worship. But when Ketiki flower tendered his apology, Shiva gave blessing that it should be fortunate to be offered to Lord Vishnu during the worship. Lord Vishnu and Brahma made salutations to Lord Shiva and offered him a seat. Then they worshipped him. This was the first time Brahma and Vishnu had worshipped Lord Shiva. Shiva was very pleased. Shivarat has been continued to be celebrated since that day. This particular day is considered to be the most auspicious day for the worship of Lord Shiva. A devotee who fasts on Shivaratri, remaining only on fruits attained virtues, equivalent to the worship done for the whole year. The idol of Shiva is concentrated on this day. Lord Shiva has himself told the deities that he had manifested in the form of pillar of fire in the month of Aghan and during the constellation of Aridra. He also said, one who has my darshan on this day, Shivaratri, on worships me in my form of linga is dearer to me than Kartikeya. The place where I manifested in the form of pillar of fire will become famous as Lingasthana. Because of its resemblance with the mountain of fire, it has also been known as Arunachal. Later on, Shiva brought back to life all the people who had died in the battle fought between Brahma and Vishnu. Lord Shiva then preached Brahma and Vishnu on the five duties, Panchakriti saying that Sristi, creation, Stiti, position, Samhar, annihilation, Trivhava, conciliation and Anugraha, obligation or kindness are the five duties by which the world functions. The source of this world in Sarga or nature. The establishment of this world is stiti or position. The tendency of this world to destroy is samhara or destruction. The feeling of the absence of this world is sirobhava or concealment and moksha or salvation is obligation or anugraha. Lord Shiva then goes on to explain that the first four duties like sarga nature, help in the nourishment of the world and the fifth duty, Anugraha, is the giver of salvation. Lord Shiva also told them, Brahma and Vishnu, that he, Shiva, has blessed both of them to look after the two duties, Srishti and Siti. Rudra and Mahesha have been entrusted with the job of Sanhara and Tribhava. The fifth duty, Anugraha, has been kept by him, said Shiva. After describing about the allocation of various duties, Lord Shiva described the meaning of Omkara to them. He said the Omkara signifies the world and contained the power of Shiva and Shakti. This powerful mantra gives all kinds of worldly com accomplishments as well as salvation. After that, Lord Shiva initiated Brahma and Vishnu with the Omkara mantra and preached them on the importance of the worship of Shivalinga. 
rituals of the worship of Shiva, sacred pilgrimages. On the request of the sages, Sutta describes about the methods of worshipping Shivalinga. He says one should construct a Shivalinga either of mud, rock or metal and establish it in such a place where it can be worshipped daily without any hindrance. The char mobile linga should be small in size and the sthira fixed linga should be large. The linga should be constructed along with the pedestal. The rule for constructing a shivalinga has been specifically described. The breadth of thickness of the linga should be twelve times the thickness of the devotees, one who is constructing the linga of finger, which the length should be twenty-five times. After establishing the linga in the above should way, it should be worshipped after performing the shodopachara. The thumb also symbolizes a shivalinga and worship can be done. While worshipping the shivalinga, the mantra, Om Namo Shivaya should be continuously chanted. Chanting this mantra for five more crore times helped a man in attaining to the abode of Shiva. Worship of Shiva done during the midnight is considered to be especially fructifying. There are numerous places of pilgrimage connected with Shiva at the banks of river Ganges and river Indus. River Saraswati is considered to be a sacrosanct river and having an opportunity of living at its banks helps in attaining to the abode of Brahma. Similarly, there are famous temples of Lord Shiva at Kashi, Naimisharanyam, Bhadri Chaitra and Kedar. There are many temples of Shiva at the banks of holy river like Ganges, Yamuna, Saraswati, Godavari, Narmada, Kaveri, Sarayu, Tungabhadra. Worshipping Shiva at these places bestows undiminishing virtues and liberates a man from all his sins. <laughs>